What's going on everybody? I have a really awesome video today. It's the biggest upgrade I've made to my car wash yet. If you followed my channel, you know that I took this car wash behind me from a complete wreck and disaster until what I have it at today. And here behind me is air dryers for each one of the bays. So you've got boom, and then there's four boxes here with those dryers inside of them. Make sure and stick around for the whole video because I always go over the numbers inside my business. I'm gonna talk about what I spent on these, but most importantly, how I'm gonna track my return on investment for these as well. Now, keep in mind, I am a rookie. This is the first time I'm installing these, but we're gonna go step by step on how I put it in. And if you have air dryers at your car wash, leave tips, ideas, comments below so that people looking to get these installed know best practices and how to do it. I'm gonna get into unboxing these and show you all the parts inside and everything, what you get when you order these air dryers. But something that's unrelated and I think is just a good reminder is anytime you get something shipped to you via freight or palleted, make sure and check it out for damage before you sign. As you can see, there are two little fork marks on these boxes here. It looks like they stuck them just very briefly. Uh, the motors are more toward the middle, so I think they're still okay. This is just mainly bubble wrap here, and as you can see, there's a sign that got a little torn up. But I think we're good, and we'll see what we got. Okay, so like a kid at Christmas, let's crack these open and see what's inside. Now, I ordered these air dryers from Diskin Systems. Uh, they're called the Air Shammy 2s, I believe. And yeah, Super Shammy 2. This is the 220 volt model three phase. And so there are a bunch of different models depending on what you have available at your car wash. Uh, if you only have 120 volts, if you don't have three phase, they have like a three motor system. But this is just what I got because it matches with uh, my car wash. Okay, so I got blue hose uh, with mine. You can do different colors of hoses. I think blue, red, and yellow are the color of hoses. Uh, it comes with a cool little gun uh, that's trigger activated and everything. And a holster for that gun. You mount on the wall in your bay. So that side. And then this is the hose that we're gonna use to connect the motor to the boom. So I imagine this will go in just like that. We'll tighten the clamp. And then this other end will go down to the boom. And then depending on who you buy it from, it looks like this is a contactor. So you may or may not get contactors with your order. Uh, just check and verify that. And if you don't, you'll just need to get uh, contactors from an electrical supply store. Some other goodies that come with it that I didn't realize was um, stickers for your meter box. I ordered them already, uh, so I'd have them with me, but this actually comes with stickers, so we're good there. Um, here's that sign that got forked, so I actually don't see any damage. Pretty durable sign, uh, even though we got forks going through it. And so we're good there, we're safe. And then this is some type of a bushing. We'll find out later in the instructions where that goes. I had to put this box on the ground so I could pull out the main attraction. This big shiny motor. This thing's a beast. It's about, I'd guess, 60 or 70 pounds. Uh, mine's a single motor version, like I said. This tag on the side says four horsepower. So we're really gonna get a lot of airflow coming out of this. I'm looking forward to seeing that set up. My mounting location is gonna be in the attic. We're gonna talk about mounting locations and everything later, so let's get into it. The other part of the shipment is out here on my tailgate. There's some brand new booms, stainless steel booms. You attach the hoses on either ends right there, and then it comes with a stainless steel bracket, uh, some decals, and some hose clamps. The only thing you need to worry about is how you're gonna attach it to the wall, whether that's bolts or anchors or whatever, but that's up to you. There's three stages to the planning process of installing air chamois in your car wash bays. That is electrical, hardware, such as booms and everything else, and then your meter boxes. So on the electrical side, Diskin's been a huge help, both Troy, Jared, Tara, on helping me identify which air chamois was best for my car wash and what electrical service I have and everything. 
Uh, you can contact them. I'm going to put their uh, website in the description below. It's DiscinSystems.com. They can help you with the sales and planning everything out. Um, and then you also need to decide where the booms are going to go in your bays. I'm starting to get more features inside my car wash bays and starting to run out of room. In fact, this might be the last boom I put in. Um, and then the last thing is your meter boxes. And so just like I was showing you earlier with these stickers and everything, the meter boxes need to have a function that you can assign to the air shim. And so I'm basically going to eliminate a rinse function and it put air chamois on that but I have other rinse functions as well. Inside the electrical cabinet on my pump stand, I got a lot going on here. You have all of your different functions from your meter boxes out in the base coming in. Then you have transformers, disconnects, contactors for your high pressure pumps. And so I wanted to keep everything isolated inside of this electrical cabinet. And so the contactors for the air chamois, I was planning on stacking in here somehow. But as you can see, the, this is really the only space I can do that. And um, it seems to be a little bit tight. So my backup plan was to use this little box here. Um, I was actually gonna scrap this, but this is off of an old RO system. Um, basically pull everything off of here and get a bigger junction box than this to mount in the center and put everything inside of there. And then I can just mount it anywhere in this equipment room. Uh, it was probably gonna go behind this door right here. But ultimately, I've found the solution that I think is gonna work really good, where I'm gonna take off this little timer right here, which hasn't worked. I bought this used, and I don't know if this is just never wired in correctly or what, but this has never worked, so I can remove that. And then I'm gonna cut this rail off and um, move that screw over to there so it's anchored and then I'll be able to open up just a little bit more space right there and get everything to fit. So we'll see how that works out. I'm not giving electrical advice, but I can explain the concepts of how my installation is gonna happen. Uh, and I do have help from somebody with more electrical experience than I do. So a contactor is basically just like a switch. It's a magnetic switch. And when it receives uh, power from a signal wire, it pulls that magnet in. So it's usually low voltage signal wire to power a high voltage contactor. And these contactors will of course go up where I just prep that area. And these contactors behind me are for my high pressure pumps. So they are 220, as you can see on the multimeter there, on both legs. And so I have power coming in off those and I'm gonna double tap those in order to uh, have power up at these contactors as well. And at no time can my rotary switch be in both positions to activate this one and this one. And so I don't need to have a separate breaker or anything else because it's just one function at a time. Just as an example, I'm gonna activate uh, bay number two high pressure pump just manually, just by pressing that in. So there's an example for you. That's how I'm running my electrical system. You may just want to do separate breakers for yours uh, or however else your electrical professional recommends. Like I said, I've got electrical help. So while that's getting done, I'm going to start packing these motors up in the attic and we'll start looking at how we're going to get those situated and mounted up. Whew, tight fit. I'm taking on this project in the middle of July, which means it's absolutely cooking up here in the attic. 
And uh, you can't tell now, but it's midnight. It makes it a little more bearable. But earlier today, I took a picture of my temp gun when it was 140 degrees up here. And so with these motors being mounted in the attic, I'm gonna look at at least installing some turtle vents, but maybe even some solar powered attic fans to get these uh, more around like ambient temperature. I just wanna install these up here to keep my bays a little more cleaner looking, less mounting all over the walls. Um, and pretty easy to access. You know, I don't need a ladder or anything to get up here and access this. And uh, so you can do what I'm doing. I've seen people mount these motors on uh, the roof itself uh, with domes over them. Uh, but even probably most common is just to mount them directly to the wall inside the bay and then just connect the hose right through. So as you can see, uh, right down the middle of my attic, the peak of this attic is uh, the middle of the bay. So this motor is gonna mount exactly where it's sitting. And then this is gonna hook in here and I'm gonna drill right down through the middle of my walkway uh, to drop it right into the middle of the bay. It's just gonna be a little bit of a step over when I'm working up here, but it's not like I'm up here that much. Um, and then here on the mounting side, I'm just gonna take a 5 8 inch drill bit, mount these in and then bolt them up with some lock washers and nuts. And underneath on the bottom, I'm just gonna slip right in there and put in my carriage bolt. Here behind me, you can see uh, the conduit is in place. I just need a pull wire to get that hooked up. So let's get started on to the next stage. While my buddy's upstairs in the sweat lodge pulling wire, I came down here and installed these timers. I just cut out a slot in the electrical cabinet here and then popped in these AC DC timers that I got off Amazon. And they're gonna be wired into the air dryer position off of these banks right here that go to my rotary switches. So it's a fun experiment that we're gonna be uh, tracking on how much of a return I'm getting off these um, based upon consumption right there. Also, uh, in a previous video about this triple foam unit, someone mentioned to me to get these ratcheting crimpers, which I got a pair of regular ones, and then these actually do flag style terminals. So whoever recommended that to me, I've enjoyed using this little guy on this project. And I'll leave a link in the description for uh, these ratcheting crimpers, as well as these ACDC timers. Uh, for our consumption tracking. All right, so before we put the bracket on the wall and hang the boom, I'm gonna drill through and drop our hose first so that we're not in the way of drilling through. This line right here is right center with my boom in the middle of the bay. So I'm gonna go just barely off center right here and on the inside a little bit, and then we'll drop it through. By the way, a two and a half inch hole saw is the perfect fit for this hose. It leaves you just a little bit of gap to feed it through, but not too much around the edges. So now we can go ahead and mount this bracket up right here. You can see they're slotted a little bit so that you can angle it so that this boom falls to the right side that you want. So on my setup, I'm gonna have it fall to that side. So I'm gonna tilt this bracket just slightly to the left so that it falls to the left when it's uh, not being used. I'm using half inch redhead anchors, so we're gonna use a half inch bit, my rotary hammer here, to drill those three holes out. All right, we're ready to put on the boom, and mine's gonna go like this, obviously, to go on the hose but if you're wall mounting your motor, you can flip this boom over like this so that the boom then faces down.
The bolt that goes through the boom is a three quarter inch. We're ready to pull this hose down and on, so I'm gonna put a clamp on there. Pull our hose down. A little bit of slack. Now take note, I'm using the swivel end down here because it's gonna be rotating a lot. I'm gonna push it on as far as I can. Then I'm gonna tighten down the clamp. I gotta interrupt our installation real quick to show you the nice Tesla that's in here washing. Tesla's love the wash. All right, let's go in the attic. Okay, we're gonna get this done quick because it's hot up here. And I already get, feel the sweat beating up on my glasses here. So I have plenty of slack on this hose. So I'm just gonna leave myself maybe an inch of extra slack and then cut through the rest. And we've got a nice long boot on here too that we can go into. So we're gonna push it around without kicking it too much. Loosen this up. I may want to cut even more off because you see I'm getting a kink right there. There we go. And another idea that I saw too was you can actually run PVC down uh, to your connection where your boom is. And then you just need a short little piece of hose to get that flex. But that might be a good idea just to avoid this kinking. The other thing I could have done was uh, mount this motor a little farther away from my entrance point. So I had a little more run to, to get that in. So those are just things I'm seeing and learning as I'm making this installation for the first time. All right, showing the camera that I did end up cutting off about three more inches and I got rid of that kink. So we're good to go. Before I connect this to the boom up top, I wanna to measure how much I need to trim off. So I'm gonna mount this little ulster first, put the gun in it, and then see uh, where I need to trim so that the hose is just hanging off the ground by like this much. And so we'll get that done. starting to look complete, but we have one more step and we're getting close to running out of daylight. You can see the bay lights are turned on now from the sun going down. Now we need to connect our rotary switch and I've turned off the power to the meter box. What we're gonna be doing here is we're going to take this rinse function right there and turn that into air dry. Ideally, it would be on spot free, but this is what I have available right now because I already have two other rinses and I can switch those later down the road. So on the back side right here, give you a tour. See how I have all these extra wires up top right there? All these extra wires. So I had a blue wire back here that was extra. I, I stole it from here. I ran it into my terminal strip, which runs over to my rotary switch. And I've taken the spare wire for that and I've crimped a new end on it. We're gonna eliminate that rinse right here on the brown and yellow. And then we're gonna stick this on the hot side and we'll be ready to roll.
that wired in, let's go down the chain of command to see how this works. When the air dry position is selected on the rotary switch, it sends 24 volts power down this blue wire back into the motor room. That pops out over here on this blue wire. Also pay attention to this white wire. They run through this terminal strip up and over to the contactor for that bay. And then those two small screws in the back behind the three screws are where they tie in and engage this contactor. I'm gonna stop there to explain a small change I made in my electrical plan but I'm not gonna edit out what I explained earlier because I think it'll still work for some of you installing this system. But where I had my wires coming into the contactors for the high pressure pumps, I had overload protection there, uh, which means I didn't need individual breakers for each one of those contactors. They were all running off one 70 amp breaker which means I would also have to have a similar setup for these contactors, some type of overload protection which I didn't have. And so I ended up just going back to the electrical panel behind me, installing 15 amp breakers there, running the power into the contactors and then back to the electrical panel. And then I looped it and went up into the ceiling. There's those four breakers right there. And if that made sense, great. If not, then you need to get an electrician. So now let's chase this upstairs. Power comes up down to these electrical junction boxes over to bay one, this is bay two down here. And then just like you guys saw before, we have another junction box and this whip comes over into the motor. And then we got our airflow going out and down. So now let's go try it out. All right, here we are, the moment of truth. So I've got my little key fobs for my NIAX readers to turn those on, authorizing. We're good, counting up. Now let's flip it to air dry. You're gonna have to listen for this. Yeah, we're ready. Now real quick, I got a cool experiment. I got a little wind meter right here. I used to use these a lot back in the day on the farm when we were spraying chemicals and stuff. But as I blow in that, you can see it went up four or five miles per hour or so. So we're gonna take the air dryer and we're gonna see how many miles per hour we can get this up to. I just thought it would be interesting to try that. As you can see, we maxed it out actually. I did see it hit like 56 miles per hour at one point, but it's much faster than that because after that, it just cleared it out, aired it. And so fun little experiment right there. All right, that's a wrap on the air chamois installation video, guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. And now I'd appreciate it if you went down below and subscribed to my channel so you can see other car wash videos as well as the case study on how much these end up making me over time as I track that usage on those meters that I installed out back. Really, on a recap though, what this comes down to is proper planning for your electrical. Uh, you know, all the way from 24 volt power from your meter box into your mechanical room and the different breaker setups that you can have and things. So it just needs to be thoroughly thought through. We got motorcycles running down the road uh, down here. So sorry about the audio quality right there. Uh, but that's it guys. I'm really excited to see what these do. Discon Systems was great to work with on the installation of this. Go to their website, get in contact with one of their distributors if you want to put this in your car wash. And until those next videos, we'll see you next time.